Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to touch base upon a very important topic, important business topic around games. That why are game delays important in a game development pipeline? And in many ways, how you can't avoid a game delay. Game delay in the sense, game being launched in the market. Why do game delays occur? And why are they a good thing as well as a bad thing? So we'll discuss all of these things in detail. So ensure that you're watching this video right till the very end so that you don't miss out on any important information being discussed in this video. So uh, let's first and foremost understand the game development pipeline. You see, making a game is not an easy task at all. From a gamer's perspective, you might wonder that what is so difficult in creating a game? Why is it so difficult to create a game that is fun to play? And uh, to a certain extent, as a gamer, when I used to play a lot of games, I would agree with your perspective. I think you as a gamer would only care about a game being good to play or not. And if it's not, you basically just judge it in the first uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and you term it as a good or bad game, right? It is very, very difficult to create a good game experience. And that's first and foremost, why it takes so much time to create a game. You see, with the exception of all these hyper casual games, the other games that have like casual or mid core experiences or hardcore experiences, they take months or even in some cases years to develop. So first and foremost, let's understand why does it take so much time to create a video game? Uh, the first reason is video games are uh, an, a piece of art. Okay, they are a piece of art. That is the reason why art is also subjective, which means that something that I like, you may not like or something that you like, I may not like. And further on, there is multiple fragmentation in games. So, you know, you've got racing games, you've got shooting games, etc, etc. Okay, so first and foremost, the first reason is that games are a piece of art. That is why it is very difficult to determine what is fun to play and what is not fun to play. Okay, so that's the first barrier of entry, where, which is wherein you write your game design document and you, uh, you know, essentially create a piece of document that uh, details out uh, what that game is going to be. This also, by the way, takes some amount of time. Creating a game design document might take you a few days to a few weeks or even a few months. And game design document is not a final uh, document. It keeps on iterating. It keeps on changing. So there goes that first piece of work in writing down, actually physically writing down that idea in the form of a document, right? So that's uh, number one. Second part is once you've identified that, okay, this is what we want to create, then you actually have to create all those things. You know, uh, painstakingly by hand writing that piece of code or even for that matter, uh, you know, looking at assets which are already available in the market. It's not the thing that if you find an asset is basically just a drag and drop import. No, even if you are using assets to create your game, you still have to integrate those inside your project. And that also takes a considerable amount of time. Then comes testing. Okay. Then comes the uh, part wherein you have to package all of this thing into, a, you know, a, a proper publishing pipeline, which means that you have to create screenshots, you have to create icons and all of that aspect. So the process in itself is extremely time consuming. Now let's talk about delays. Why do games get delayed? So multiple reasons, um, you know, uh, the primary reason can be that uh, while the company is working on that project, the company or that individual or that group of team, um, you know, group of people, they are working on that project. They are not able to meet deadlines for whatever reason. And these, these reasons can be literally anything. For example, imagine uh, the company has set a deadline of uh, two months uh, to create a feature. Okay. Uh, or within a game and the game's development cycle is going to last maybe say nine months. Uh, but in those two months, uh, while there were about 10 people assigned to that project, two of them fell sick. Uh, maybe two of them had some personal reasons due to which they could not contribute to the work, right? So now you're left with out of the 10, you're left with a team size of six people. Now, because there is a shortfall of four people, uh, naturally, there is going to be some sort of a delay in terms of the overall production pipeline. So something that you estimated is going to uh, take nine months might take you 11 months or 12 months, right? And for bigger projects, this gets even more crazy because what happens is for bigger projects, everything is interdependent on the other person's job, right? So it is always, um, you know, 
mandatory for studios or individuals to factor in a buffer. What I mean by buffer is that buffer is a time period that you take for yourself to determine that if something goes wrong, then this is the extra amount of time I need uh, for making the game. This also ties up to the question of money. Okay. Because you see that uh, while the game is in development uh, pipeline, you're not making any money. You're actually losing money. You are investing that money. Losing would be a wrong term. You are investing that money in building that game, right? So the expenses are either a coming out of your pocket or B they're coming out of the investment that you raise for that project, right? And most of the cases, if the game's development pipeline gets extended, you have to put in more money because obviously you have to maintain the team that is working on that project. You have to pay salaries to people who are working on that project. And you have to also ensure that you are, uh, you know, paying your bills, you are uh, uh, paying your office rent, um, you're paying for internet, uh, your, uh, you know, miscellaneous other expenses and so on and so forth. Right. So the number of months uh, with which that game gets delayed, you have to account for the cost thereby whenever you're planning a game always ensure that you are factoring in a buffer period of time that you will require to complete that project and believe you me delays are very very common in the industry uh, we, so we, have, we, we have seen that the last gta installment that is gta 5 came in about 2013 since then till now, we have only seen one trailer of GTA 6 and we know that GTA 6 is going to be launched sometime in the near future. We don't have a fixed date, but it is going to be launched soon. However, it's been more than 10 years. Imagine 10 years for one game, right? Like that, uh, we have seen games being delayed by multiple months. And in most cases, it is actually in the favor of that game's quality. You see, if a game is being delayed, it basically just means that, you know, either the production is not in place and the team is taking efforts to ensure that the game is being ready and pushed out at the best of their capability. See, at the end of the day, game developers are also people, they are humans and nobody consciously wants to put out a bad game, right? However, there can be certain decisions that are not uh, totally under the control of game developers at, uh, at times. Uh, these can be in the form of management uh, trying to push them to ship out the game. In most of the companies, uh, this is a very common practice. Uh, some of the very few companies kind of take a step back and say that, okay, we will take our time. We will not rush out a product. We will take our time, whatever it takes, and but we will put out a good game. Okay. So the advantage is that sometimes uh, game delays can work in the favor of the game. The disadvantage is are that while the game is under development, the company or that individual needs to take care of all the expenses that are going to be required to finish the game. So say, for example, if you have a development timeline of nine months and you have a budget of 90,000 US dollars, okay, which means that you're spending $10,000 roughly around um, every month. However, if you are saying that uh, you know, uh, I cannot finish the project in nine months on the fourth month. You realize that there is going to be some sort of a delay. Uh, the team members were not performing to the best of their capability. That's the reason why there is going to be some sort of a delay. And these can be, these reasons can be literally anything, you know, you can't possibly factor in the delays or the reasons for delay that will be happening while you're planning things on paper uh, during the initial stages of development. So it is hundred percent a guarantee that your project is going to be delayed no matter how crystal clear your planning is even the biggest and biggest of studios they face delays so if you are an individual or you are just starting out a new company or you are an established studio who has shipped a few titles or has worked on client projects keep in mind that your project is going to get delayed there's no two minds about this okay um, the other part of the equation is that while the game is under delays you have to, as I said, take care of all the costs related to uh, the game. That is why you need to plan out your budgets in a way such that you are accounting for the development of that game's completion. Okay. Um, 
and this is where a lot of studios face struggle because you know and the, this is actually quite quite very very common you know financial issues or production pipeline issues or uh, finding teammates that were probably not the best fit for your project these are extremely common issues in the game development pipeline and almost every studio every other studio or even if you have developed a game or worked with freelancers you know that these are extremely common issues however from an outsider's perspective game delays are generally looked down upon it's like you know when are you releasing the game just release the game already and if at all the developer by you know by any chance releases a bad game then the users come back to the developers and say that you know why did you rush this project however on the on the flip side if a developer takes their time and the game is delayed by a few months or a few years and the game turns out to be good then it's an investment well worth it so it's a very difficult and a tricky decision to take uh, should you delay your game or not uh, if it's in the favor of the game's quality 100% you absolutely need to delay but you also need to keep in mind that there's a thin line between game delays and the game being launched uh, you know almost like indefinitely never being launched indefinitely so you have to have certain targets and these need not be communicated to the rest of the world you just need to have as a developer a fair understanding of what you are building and how much time it's going to take for you to develop that game okay so in summary if i were to just recall or whatever we have discussed is a game delays are normal b game delays can happen due to a wide variety of reasons it can be due to a team member falling sick it can be uh, due to your uh, poor uh, planning or lack of experience in building that uh, building a game of that type it can be uh, you know even your software related issues it might be hardware related issues it might so happen that uh, you know the project that you're working on um, the source code got uh, did not get saved properly or it was saved on a cloud storage or it was uh, maybe uh, committed um, and you accidentally do a wrong commit to the source code there can be any number of reasons and one cannot anticipate what is going to cause a game delay d uh, you know uh, game delays need to be accounted for financially because if it's not then most certainly there will be some sort of a roadblock in the development journey uh, there has uh, been plenty of examples in the past where studios have shut down mid development because they ran out of money and this is a very very common thing you need to be aware that you need to plan out your games development pipeline properly so that you don't run out of money during development you also have to account for the fact that once the game goes out in the market you have to keep some sort of a marketing budget for it but that's a topic for some other video some other time i think i've covered almost everything what are your thoughts on game delays what are your thoughts on game production pipeline delays and what do you think uh, are some of the common factors that uh, are responsible for game development delays let me know in the comment section if you, and if you like this video hit the like button and if you're finding my channel for the first time hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next videos I'm a game developer by profession and I put out a lot of content around game development on my YouTube channel. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, take care.